Don in London, hello. It's uh, June 5th, and my videos are all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. And I've been doing these for quite a while now. But what counts is today, and what helps me more than anything is understanding how I feel, why, and what I can do, so I can understand where I'm coming from, and then maybe asking the question, how are you feeling, why, and what can we do together? So it's about assertiveness and empathy in life. Included, not excluded. So what was my addictive substance? Alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. Here I share a little bit of experience, strength and hope, not necessarily mine, uh, from AA, Alcoholics Anonymous. So what is AA? I'll just share the AA preamble here on this little card. What you see is what you get. And it's the many voices in AA where the experience is. So what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And attached to this today's video, this year, are some years previous. I wonder if you can hear that. That is Gaucho Restaurant chucking out its bottles after a Saturday night. And uh, Gaucho is one of the famous restaurants close to me in London, UK. Yes, it's a bit late in the day for them, it's half past eight in the morning, and normally they do it around about eight o'clock, so I thought I'd miss them. There you go. So fellowship offers me inclusion, anonymity, to find out the truth of who I am, and also to share experience, strength and hope as I may, either on these videos or in meetings. And in meetings, I also get experience, strength and hope, which I can share here too. So, if I've made any improvement over the last few years, it has a lot to do with people in fellowship. Under the umbrella of anonymity, a sanctuary to find out the truth of who we are. When I can't get to meetings, I refer to books like this one, 24 hours a day, from Hazelden. Not an AA book, <coughs> although it's... Um, it's got its place in the hearts of many people in fellowship. Here's another one which has got nothing to do with fellowship at all. Shankara's Crest Jewel of Discrimination. Timeless teachings on non-duality. Or in other words, how to be yourself. <coughs> we all have words and jargon, don't we? As Bill sees it, co-founder, he is uh, a shining light, I guess, in the 20th century helping people to be themselves, <coughs> which is what I like. Desiderata of Happiness, Max Ehrman. You'll find, if you do read the poems of Max Ehrman, there are lots of uh, passages which reflect life and the 12 steps that we learn in AA, how to live the 12-step programme, and it all works for us. Daily Reflections uh, follows on the rest of this video. Uh, one, one page a day, and for each month, uh, one of the steps is covered. So January is step one through to December, step 12. And of course, this is step six month, June, which is all about defects of character and how to deal with them, or, you know, our assets and liabilities, the liability that is me when I'm in the problem and not in the solution. The 12 and 12, the 12 steps and 12 traditions, it's almost like a textbook of how we can live to good principles in the 12 steps and the 12 traditions which hold the fellowship in unity, service and recovery. And the 12 traditions also are about equality, freedom of expression as we choose, and not about control, never ever about controlling one person over another person. Or we go backwards into putting on a brave face, telling people what to do when we don't know how to control them or their expression and ego which means we think better than they do and I've learned in fellowship I don't know better than anybody else I keep on learning life
but I know what what is good for me and that's all I can go by so try not to put my views or, or feelings on you always and uh, then the Bible if you like it's not actually a Bible it's a collection of stories about how alcoholics well it's got stories of recovery plus how AA came into being and the 12 steps in a nutshell <coughs> but today I just want to share a bit from chapter 11 a vision for you by the way the pile of books on the floor is not the only ones I refer to or are not the only ones I refer to I refer to anything that makes sense so if I hear something which is good I share it so anything I share here is a collection of things which come from others not necessarily from me so uh, I'm just a messenger always and it's then up to an individual to decide what is good for them as you are you know what's going to work in your life that's all that counts to be open honest and willing to keep on changing and be a part of life without a drink inside me or you that's where it, where it all comes down to or boils down to this sobriety rather than being stuck in an addiction which is killing not only physically but emotionally and spiritually killing our experience of life so a vision for you this is how it might have been for me but I don't know that it was for most normal folks drinking means conviviality companionship and colourful imagination it means release from care boredom and worry it is joyous intimacy with friends and a feeling that life is good but not so with us in those last days of heavy drinking the old pleasures were gone they were but memories never could we recapture the great moments of the past there was an insistent yearning to enjoy life as we once did and a heartbreaking obsession that some new miracle of control would enable us to do it there was always one more attempt and one more failure the less people tolerated us the more we withdrew from society from life itself as we became subjects of king alcohol shivering denizens of his mad realm the chilling vapor that is loneliness settled down it thickened even becoming blacker some of us sought out sordid places hoping to find understanding companionship and approval momentarily we did then would come oblivion and the awful awakening to face the hideous four horsemen terror bewilderment frustration despair unhappy drinkers who read this page will understand and that's from chapter 11 and I'll read a bit more of that maybe tomorrow but the whole point is yeah king alcohol a shivering denizen of that mad realm and all the fear that went with it fear of being me fear of telling the truth fear of turning up for life putting on a brave face whenever asked are you alright yes absolutely and I'm fine leave me alone I didn't actually say leave me alone bit by saying I was fine and I had a bit of a jolt a couple of days ago when I was uh, traveling with my mother and my sister to look at where they're going to live next and I was a bit shocked actually some of the memories that my mum has of me in my drinking days and then she thought oh my god well, why did I say that and about an hour later as we arrived at the destination she said, I, she said I should not have said that to you because it upset you I said no actually I'm glad you did say it but it did upset me because that's what I was like I was a shivering wreck of a person unable to stop drinking and it was some years before I got sober and goodness me my mum has had to put up with a lot over the years my father was an alcoholic although we didn't know it and uh, I had a terrible childhood not because of my mother but because of what happened with my father and what I've learned is it's not about blaming dad for anything and it's not about blaming mum for anything but the shock and the horror that my mum went through was not really fair it was a horrible thing she didn't wish for it or ask for it and I didn't wish for it or ask for it either and nor did my father but the point is if we have a problem then maybe we need to face up to it and if we can face up to it and get to a place where we find sanctuary hence the anonymity bit in Alcoholics Anonymous if we can find sanctuary to find our truth then we're 
on a path into the solution but it's a very difficult path around truth, open, honest and willing and accepting help and inclusion from others so we have to come out of the dark into the light we have to come out of our shell try and open up the front door try and listen try and phone somebody just try to be included again and fellowship does offer that principle of anonymity where we find out that we're not so different from everybody else who's going through the mill the hard times and also finding a way into the solution where we deal with life which is difficult anyway enough of this on this video more to follow with the daily reading and other stuff for this day uh, they're getting longer but switch off when you're ready even at the beginning if you don't like it or me that's perfectly okay all I would ask is find fellowship if you can and you need anonymity to get into the solution of life freedom to be yourself today the serenity prayer which helps me at any time in any place uh, whether I'm an atheist, agnostic or believer it can be said to God or in good conscience and it works for me it tells me what I can and cannot do today when I'm facing anything good or bad so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer goes like this God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is for me just for today Dawn in London, June 5th Daily Reflections from this book for many of us who are in recovery provides a bit of uh, background if you like to start our day and it says here for June 5th entirely ready this is the step that separates the men from the boys and it's talking about step 6 which is about removal of defects of character the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective that's our own objective and for the perfect objective which is of God that is I suppose the greater good it is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim toward perfection although we'll never reach it the moment we say no never our minds close against the grace of God which is truth wisdom and love of others well, truth love and wisdom of others this is the exact point at which we abandoned limited objectives that's our own outlook for the greater outlook and move toward God's will for us us we the world the planet am I entirely ready to have God remove these defects of character ready to have them removed they don't go we have to work on it on a daily basis do I know at long last that I cannot save myself well I worked that one out very long in, into my life I have come to believe that I cannot if I am unable if my best intentions go wrong if my desires are selfishly motivated and if my knowledge and will are limited then I am ready to embrace God's will for my life so in other words if I embrace life and God is truth, God is love and God works through people then I have a better chance rather than just my limited outlook John in London, hello. It's June 5th, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance was alcohol, my behaviour, always trying to be perfect and never so. But I strived for perfection because that's what I thought it was all about, to be the best I could. But often I was deploying the wrong measures of, to make my life work. And much of the measures over the years were about uh, what it looked like on the outside, uh, covering up any fears and putting on a brave face and materially looking right with the right place to live the right amount of money the right amount of this that and the other but always wanting a bit more and never satisfied and I guess that was because I was chasing the wrong goals in life and uh, a total reappraisal of my life since I stopped drinking and uh, I fell off my perch several times having got to fairly good jobs in the world and then lost them and the reason why I lost them I didn't really f feel that I'd actually made a mark and these days I don't try and make one at all the idea for me is to live life as best I can and be emotionally, spiritually and physically the 
sort of average, I guess, making sure I take care of me so I can then take care and be with others, be included in family, society, civilization as uh, best I can. So in my videos are really about recovery from being a pla in a place of the problem and moving to the solution. And what helps me most, obviously, for me is the fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonym Anonymous. Uh, a fellowship which daily gives me an opportunity to find out the truth of now. And sometimes the truth of now hurts because we inadvertently hurt people and I've done that this week. And it was because I, I was asked a question and I didn't check whether or not there needed to be an answer to it. I might have been better saying, well I don't know that, or yes, I don't know that, as simple as that. Um, and there we are, you know, we all make problems and then we have to find the solution which is the best thing, to do no harm, uh, let people be where they are, and let myself be where I am. So, sad and sorry, that, that's all right actually, because it's, it's about finding out the truth, the truth of now, and it's not just mine exclusively. So, as I am included, uh, I make mistakes, and I just learn as I go along. And of course, there are consequences to that, and they are as they are right now. So AA helps me move from the problem to the solution on a daily basis and there are 720 meetings in London as, has, as I have been advised by a friend and at every meeting we share the AA preamble and uh, it's about what it can do and what it can't do and what it is involved in doing and what it doesn't want any involvement in. So there is only one reason for the fellowship being there and this is how it goes in the AA preamble shared at every meeting I go to. And it says, Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their ex experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their, their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that comes on a little card like this, available in most meetings I go to, and inside it has the 12 steps, which are the action program for individuals and the 12 traditions. If I can get that in there. Yeah, just about see it. But on that single card there you've got the steps, that's for individuals to learn, adopt and live by, if you like. Twelve steps of a action about changing attitude and changing behaviour. And then there are the twelve steps, sorry, the twelve traditions. And steps are about being open and honest and willing to change from the problem to the solution. Traditions are about re recovery, unity and service. That is how to keep the fellowship safe so people can find sobriety one day at a time. So, six months, six step is we're entirely ready to have God remove these defects of character. And uh, the defects of character probably means we overuse some of our behaviour. And it's not helpful to ourselves or to other people. So it's called defects in the programme. And that's a language of 70 years ago. So, people would say these days, these are room, room, this is a place where I've got room for manoeuvre and development. I can be different, I can change my attitude and I can change my behaviour. But defects is really about what emotionally goes on in our heads around fear, brave facing, ego for me. Those are my three top, top ones and then you can add every single negative adjective possibly to any situation I might find myself in. And, you know, we learn on a daily basis or we fail to, co to communicate with ourselves or other people the truth of ourselves. So when we feel hurt it's often we want to run away and hide from it or actually absent ourselves and some of the times sometimes it's a good idea which is what I'm doing in relation to a particular situation no matter what I do I cannot make it right so there we are you know the learning lesson is even though we wish it to be right and uh, we never meant to do that and it's absolutely against our nature to hurt another human being it's so easy to do and that is often how the road to hell is described it is the road to hell that is good intent. So I'm learning, I'm human, and I, I cannot put it right on my own, so there we are. In this book, Daily Reflections, part of the AA literature pack, 
Of which there are many, and uh, you, it's again choosing what you like and uh, not going with things you're not so sure about. But it says here, entirely ready for June 5th. This is the step, and this is step six, that separates the men from the boys. And if it was written now, it would be the women from the girls, I guess. The difference between boys, the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the perfect objective, which is God. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim toward perfection. The may, moment we say, no, never, our minds are closed against the grace of God, or good conscience, or whatever it is you consider to be your higher power. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objectives and move toward God's will for us, or good conscience, or be open to the ideas that are around, around us from other people, and to be included. So it's about opening up and not trying to get our self-will, run riot, or put on a brave face, remain in fear, and uh, live with a brittle ego which can be punctured at any moment. And sometimes I think that is me. It goes on to say, Am I entirely ready to have God remove these defects of character or open me up to the areas of development in my attitude and behaviour? And the answer is, yes, but I have to say so daily because I can go backwards very quickly and say, I don't like this, I, want, I don't believe it, I want to go back to denial. And it says here, did I know or do I know at long last that I cannot save myself? Yes. Have I, and I have become, I have come to believe that I cannot? Yes. If I am able, it is my if my best intentions go wrong, if my desires are selfishly motivated, and if my knowledge and will are limited, then I am ready to embrace God's will for my life. I think I've read that wrong, but it, in essence, for me, what it means is, in, sometimes we do go a bit on, don't, don't I? But the essence for me is, if I let the world in, as if I can't stop it, or I can stop it, if I let the world in, I get more information from people around me. So if God is truth, God is love, and God works through people, uh, then I'm okay. I'm on to a winner. And a winner in being normal, not, not in the sense of being better or worse than other people, just making my life more understandable and the possibilities more open. If I control it, self will run riot, obsess, I'll go isolated, get, get away from what can help me, and that is the truth of now. So I need information and to be included to find the truth of now, and that's the gift of step six. And in this book, uh, willingness is the key, according to as Bill sees it, and you can read as many of these a day as you like, just in case you're having trouble connecting with the real world. No matter how much one wishes to try, exactly how, to, how can he turn his will over and his own life over to the care of whatever God he thinks there is? A beginning, even the smallest, is all that is needed. Once we have placed the key of willingness in the lock and have the door ever so slightly open, we find that we can always open it some more. Through self-will, though self-will may slam it shut again, as it frequently does, it will always respond to the moment we again pick up the key of willingness. And that's me. I need to keep that key of willingness open or I will fall flat on my face over and over again. So serenity and acceptance is around there. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to learn the difference just one day, well, sometimes one second, one minute, one hour. And that's it for now. Hello, Don in London here again, and it's June 4th, two th no, June 5th, 2008, Thursday, just after lunchtime. And I'm discombobulated, I'm all over the place, trying to uh, probably do too much, and I had to go out very shortly. So, where am I today? Well, I'm very, I'm very happy, and I'm learning how to be me, and it's a, it's a hard process learning how to be oneself because we feel often we need to be more than we are or we feel often that we are more than we are because our ego is brittle and we're trying to be something maybe we're not and uh, what I've been learning over recent years is just trying to be me in the day just learning how to be me and what works for me if, as a person in recovery from addiction and that means I'm recovering not recovered I, I put that caveat in simply because many 
would suggest that we are recovered and we can get on and be ourselves and ordinary and life will just go on floating along and uh, what I've found is life floats along better with a little help from my friends in Alcoholics Anonymous and um, I'm just going to pause for a moment yeah I had to stop just for a moment uh, I've been experimenting how to send a video to a very important person in my life and that's my new girlfriend I've got a girlfriend and it sounds good to say that I know it's true it's all happening to me and I never thought it would I thought I was going to be an old duffer and end up all alone and I now realize even at this early stage that uh, we're all better for being in relationships and connected to the world and as Freud said Freud suggested that inclusion was important choices are important and love is paramount so inclusion choices and love so why are those things so important to me well simply because after a while of drinking I found myself excluded with little choice and pretty much no love for myself or for anybody else because if we can't love ourselves enough to keep normal and ordinary in an extraordinary way we're very hard pushed to love another person because we just, just don't feel right we are discombobulated and what I'm finding is that uh, I can be discombobulated anyway what works for me <coughs> going to the fellowship of AA and meetings and doing the 12 steps and uh, June is all about step 6 and as it says on this piece of card here the 12 steps of AA and 12 traditions step 6 it says we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character and uh, that's the deficits if you like it's almost like the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues and the seven deadly sins go into step six trying to deal with our defects or even our default reactions to life and that is either what has worked for us in the past to keep people at bay excluding them and keeping ourselves iso isolated and uh, cho choosing to be shut down rather than opened up and not able to have fellowship or love in our lives or to have love and fellowship in our lives and we get those choices back in recovery and being sober day to time so as AA preamble says Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other so that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism and that's all about inclusion in the fellowship and the fellowship is only as good as the people you meet on a daily basis and sometimes we're all pretty crap and some days we're all really hot and in the moment of now and what the program does is enable us to see this one day only and it goes on to say the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking that is uh, from the traditions, tradition 3, sobriety there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions which means that we don't get any help from outside sources so anything you see in AA is generated by the people who go to it and it's not reliant on outside influences and it believes that any outside influences which are connected to economy or money will actually divert us from our primary purpose which is simply to stay, st stay sober one day at a time AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution which means it's not an organisation, it's a fellowship and it's not Freemasons and it's not that secret although we keep our anonymity in the room so we may find our path to truth, openness and honesty again and be willing to change and the best thing about this fellowship of anonymity means we can make as many mistakes as we wish and need to in the fellowship before we out, are out there again trying to make life work and it says, goes on to say where are we? Yes. neither endorses nor opposes any causes our primary purpose is, is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety so we give it away we give it away for free and uh, a fellowship how extraordinary it does mean though that when you uh, encounter AA on any particular day it is really only as good as the people are on that day and it's a broad church so it's full of people who have different sets of culture, diversity, religious beliefs, you name it it's a broad church and the gift if you like is just being able to see life in the day as it is from so many different viewpoints 
we start to learn and understand our own. June is all about step six in these books, the daily reflections, as, and there are bits of, as Bill sees it, in the 24 hour day book I use. Now, I use God and good conscience, and good conscience is my connection to my higher power, inside me and outside me. And I believe AA is a fellowship to higher power simply because it's about sobriety and it keeps me well. So this is from Daily Reflections, June 5th. Entirely ready, question mark. This is the step that separates the men from the boys. The difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, which is of God, or good conscience. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim toward perfection. The moment we say, no, never, our minds close against the grace of God, or through conscience. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objectives and move towards God's will for us. Twelve steps and twelve traditions. Am I entirely ready to have God remove these defects of character? Do I know at long last that I cannot save myself? I have come to believe that I cannot. If I am unable, uh, if my best intentions go wrong, if my desires were selfishly motivated, and if my knowledge and will are limited, then I am ready to embrace God's will for, me, for my life. And translated for me, what it means is, if I open myself up and stop running on self-will run riots, which is where drinking took me, and I realize on a daily basis what I can and cannot do, that's the serenity prayer, and learn the wisdom and have a bit of courage, faith and confidence rather than be downhearted and in a place of ego, depression and uh, bravery or putting on a brave face, then life becomes easier in the solution rather than living in the problem. And uh, as Bill sees it, this one, not necessarily quite about uh, step six, but uh, who's inventory, page 161. We do not relate intimate experiences of another member unless we are sure he would approve. We find it better, when possible, to stick to our own stories. A man can criticise or laugh at himself, and it will affect others favor favourably, but criticism or ridicule, ridicule aimed at someone else often produces the contrary effect. A continuous look at the assets, our assets and liabilities, and a real, a real desire to learn and grow by this means are, necess by this means are necessities for us. We alcoholics have learned this the hard way. More experienced people, of course, in all times and places, have practiced unsparing self-survey and criticism. And I guess really what that's saying is it's a good idea to do your own self-appraisal against the elements of emotional, spiritual and physical well-being and see how we're doing. So there we are, a bit about me and my life. And I'm running out of time. I haven't got time for the 24-hour day of this video. And I will be back later to do tomorrow's readings in good time for tomorrow. So that's me for now, and uh, more later. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, 
that fellowship is AA. And today, I just want to read from this book, Twelve Steps and Twelve Traditions, which is the backbone, I guess, of much of what the fellowship is about. Twelve Steps So We Can Live Well, Open, Honest and Willing. And the Twelve Traditions in Fellowship, Unity, Service and Recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card, which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do, to include people around being sober one day at a time, and living a spiritual life, knowing what our feelings are, and not drinking. So, what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. And what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are. So we try not to tell each other what to do. But there are some principles involved, and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tradi traditions help us to find a sober life. And uh, June, for me, is all about step six. So I share the step. And also a commentary about how it works for me. And step six, it says here, we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets? It probably boils down to the in the biblical sense the seven deadly seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues, the opposite. And if you look on the internet you'll find many a version and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly right so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity so pride is the first deadly sin or defect Envy is the desire for others, traits, status, abilities or situation. Gluttony, the third one, is an inordinate desire to consume more than, one, than, more than that which one requires. Lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body. Anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury. It is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath. Sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. And the opposite, if you like, the seven contrary virtues. Humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, diligence. And the contrary virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the, the poem, an epic poem written by Prudentius, circa 410 AD. An epic poem written... Practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins. Humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed, and diligence against sloth. So, very black and white, you're either one or the other. But in real life, what are we? We're all of those things at different times in our lives. And although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old-fashioned, 
we all have some sort of traits around those issues and the 12 steps of the fellowship try to address this in, in the way I understand it in step 6 and step 7 so step 6 is all about my defects of character and step 7 is all about my shortcomings so my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues short on virtue but in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society but around that is a personal code so these 12 steps principles these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living and how we do that is entirely up to us no one's going to stop us doing it another way and if they were trying to stop us our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way we get stubborn and defiant often or I did so step six in the fellowship program reads as this with a bit of commentary from me and don't forget this is just a personal understanding it's your understanding in the end which counts and where do you get your personal understanding from life and also listening to the many voices in society and probably in the fellowship of AA if you stick around long enough so we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character this is the step that separates the men from the boys or the women from the girls so de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six yes he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly step six on all his, his faults without any reservations whatever has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator and again don't get hung up on creator it's the God of your understanding or a power greater than you which counts in this the common good often is used or utilized of course the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain, certain conditions remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member to him this proposition will be no theory at all it will be just about the largest fact in his life he will usually offer his proof in a statement like this sure I was beaten absolutely licked my own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol change of scene the best efforts of family friends doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism I simply couldn't stop drinking and no human being could seem to do the job for me but when I became willing to clean house that's step four and then asked a, a higher power God as I understand him to give me release my obsessions to drink vanished he was lifted right out of me well it didn't quite work that way because I was a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time but when I got to fellowship I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self will will run riot and willpower will fail and it was right so I listened to the many voices if God works through people the wisdom came quick and easy for me so I stuck around for quite a while shivering with, with fear another one of my defects until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people and then I started to learn in AA meetings all over the world statements just like this are heard daily it is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession so in a very complete and literal way all AA's have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives and God has pre proceeded to do exactly that and I would add to that as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking then my defects of character seem to diminish personality traits don't go away completely they just don't 
but if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their, be their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning, and as it says, humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liber liberality and diligence. So working on sober rather than working on the next drink. Here their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to reprodu reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things. Indeed, God made him that way. He did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol, but he did give, him, give man instincts to help him stay alive. It is nowhere evidence evident, at least in this life, that our Creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives. Indeed, that would be foolish to think that. So far as we know, it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives. Indeed, that would be unnatural. Since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires, it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose, and that's to do with our thinking. And, and our vices, I guess. When they drive us blindly, or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us, that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth, or as nature intended. That is the measure of our character defects, or if you wish, our sins. If we ask, God will certainly forgive all our derelictions, but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation. That is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character, and if we think about our youth where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control, as we came into adulthood and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms and of course drink is not one of them to excess and then addiction but of course every other behaviour can be an addiction too as many have found so step six we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job in other words to find balance in our natural drives and living so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect. Because if we try to be perfect from day one, we would fail. We, we would be back on pride and self-will. The key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn. How many of us have this degree of readiness? In an absolute sense, practically nobody has it. The best we can do, with all honesty that, can, that we can summon, is to try to have it. Even then, the best of us will discover, to our dismay, that there is always a sticking point, a point at which we say, no, I can't give this up yet. And we shall often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry, this I will never give up. Such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves. No matter how far we have progressed, desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God, or, as some say, nature and providence as we've got to where we are in our nature and providence, that is 
as the world is today. Some who feel they have done but well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps. No one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy, or to be paralysed by sloth. Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock-bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves, yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway, but when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life however it turns out to be. What we must recognize now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow, or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say? so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds. And even while staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything. I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn de and defiant about something we believe there is one path, and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. and. Uh, <clears throat> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. Even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it, because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy, to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction, else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not, rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it? And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call, it, only we call that retiring. Consider, too, our talent for pr procrastination, which is really slow in five syllables. Nearly anyone can make a good list of, the, of such defects as these, and few of us would, be se would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And, without a doubt, if we go hell for leather in one direction, thinking we're right, and we wonder why nobody's following us, 
we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up but if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right or that my way or the highway is the right way then we are alone again and isolated and we may not drink but we're certainly not as sober as we could be some people of course may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them but even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according of course to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission, we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals but you know strict adherence on a daily basis life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways so defects as well as virtues will be around there are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress seen in this light step six is still difficult but not at all impossible the only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying and that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence we are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry the answer may be no so we keep on trying looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say this I cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up let's dispose of what happen, appears to be a hazardous open end we have left it is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection we know that some delay however might be pardoned that word in the mind of a rationalizing alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long term meaning he could say how very easy sure I'll head towards perfection but I'm certainly not going to hurry Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalization. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Or complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked or we provoke others. The moment we say no never, our minds close against the grace of God, or common sense. 
after all, what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us, as nature intended, nature and providence. All these wonderful words I like because you know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is in the moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often, that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve. So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows yeah. humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth and step six the seven deadly sins or removal of them is subject to asking on a daily basis how am I going to live today how do I want to behave how do I want to be open honest and willing to change my attitude and behavior to fit my circumstances and do my feelings fit my life right now if we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily and also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behavior. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality, and diligence. And I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticized deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student. And it was pounced upon as a defect. It's a defect to keep on point, pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it, if you get my drift. So these are my views and understandings of that step six and seven. So how does it work for me on a daily basis? Well, in the morning I say how am I feeling, why and what can I do? If I feel okay given my current situation, my feelings fit my, my experience right now, then life is understandable and comprehensible. I can, I can get on with it. But if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way in a particular direction of those defects or sins or well, my virtues are without foundation courage, faith and confidence over elated I need to, to ask myself why am I feeling this way and that's not to actually analyse to death how am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point I don't know how I feel right now. Why? Because I haven't given it a second thought. What can I do? Consider my options today. Or well, if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful, or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do, then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence. And I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being. Not necessarily in fellowship, but somebody who I love and loves me back. And that's unconditional love. It's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care. Something my father said. He wished he had cherished my mother more and been less superficial and indifferent. And I think that sums it up. Cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent. The only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people. So the steps work for me 
daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone inclusively and not just me so I'm merely a player and I'm not the chief critic anymore I hope although I will be chief critic in my own life often and sometimes flail at others and be critical but it does me no good and it does them no good step six June step seven July I can have a bit of both in each day I can have a fairly bad start or a fairly good start enough courage faith and confidence to keep on going or I could have fear very facing an ego in my heart it's as life is and it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again freedom to choose life life on life's terms always a unique and authentic path for each person and in fellowship with one similarity a desire to be sober today the serenity prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today.